Hi everyone, so today we're going to do a quick review of factoring before you do your homework, okay? Quick factoring review. Alright, so we have really talked about step one, so I want you to think about what step one is in your mind. Um, and remember that we always want to take out the GCF first, okay? After that, we look for how many terms we have. If we have two terms like this, we want to say, is it dots? Is it the difference of two squares? Well, x squared is a perfect square, 25 is a perfect square, and there's a difference between them. So then I can use the factor pattern, which would give me x plus 5, x minus 5. Now a harder example would be when we have something that does have a GCF, so like 3x squared minus 27. So we see the GCF, we pull it out to the front, leaving us with x squared minus 9. Now we'd like to think we're done, but we always have to look at what we're left with and say, did I factor it completely? Well, in the parentheses there, you may see that that is again, that's dots, it's the difference of two squares. So keeping the 3, we can use the factor pattern x plus 3, x minus 3. Okay, so that's dots. Then we moved on to perfect square trinomials. So a perfect square trinomial is when the first and last term are perfect squares, the last term is positive, and the middle term is double the roots of those outer terms. So multiplied. So 3 times x is 3x, doubling it is 6. So that's a perfect square trinomial. So to factor that, our result is going to be the square of a binomial, and it's going to be x plus 3. Remember, we keep the sign. Um, we take the square root of the first term, the square root of the last term, and the sine of the middle term. Now, when we look for perfect square trinomials, we don't want to forget about the GCF. That's this example that came up in class today. A lot of you factored it without taking out the GCF first. It's not necessarily wrong if you factor it out at the end, but it's easier if you take it out first, leaving us with x squared plus 4x plus 4. Okay, now that is also a perfect square trinomial, so it factors to x plus 2 quantity squared. All right, so those are the factor patterns. Then today in class, we went over harder examples. When the coefficient in front of x squared, so the a term, is bigger than 1. And remember, first we look at our factors of 6, which are 6 and 1, 3 and 2. Then we look at our factors of 5, which are 5 and 1. All right. Now, we want to make sure that we try our factors. So I always like to start with the ones that I'm, are more common, and 3 and 2 are more commonly seen than 6 and 1. So I'm going to try those first. They may not be right, but I'm going to try those. And the only other factors are 5 and 1, and so that's where I, ta I taught you about the OI check. There's my O, my outers, my inner check from that foil you use. So I want to put the 5 in a place so that when it's multiplied 5 and 1 in a place so that when it's multiplied to the 3 and the 2 it gives me 7. So I'm going to actually put the 5 here and the 1 here and see what happens. Well if I multiply 5 times 2 I connect these two I get 10x. If I connect 3x and 1 and multiply them I get 3x. I want those to multiply to a negative which means 1 has to be negative but add to a positive. The only way I'll get a positive 7 is if the 3 was negative. So the 3 comes from the outside, so that's a negative and a positive. All right, guys, so that's kind of how what we practiced today in class. You have some textbook problems to do, and I want you checking the odds in the back of your book um, and also doing some work on your March exam review. Have a great day.